We've covered more than a few of the films of Takashi Miike thus far on Cinema Nippon. From some of his greatest hits to some of his lesser-remembered projects, there's a lot to be said about this prolific director. Today, though, we'll be taking a look at arguably the most important film from a career standpoint for Miike. While films like Ichi the Killer and Visitor Q gave Miike his cult following as a purveyor of the sick and twisted, today's subject, Audition, introduced Miike to a global audience, tying viewers up in theaters and their own living rooms and watching them squirm over the course of some five influential years. Prior to Audition's initial festival release in 1999 and its wide Japanese theater run in 2000, Takashi Miike had spent half a decade slowly building his name within his home country through his numerous films. Even earlier than this, he had made a name for himself as a maverick auteur of straight-to-video projects. Tackling a number of diverse topics like nostalgia, crime, drama, and even the occasional pop television film, Miike's early films took their time to show the great breadth of what the director was capable of. Thus, by the time that audition hit the screen, his biggest fans at home were well accustomed to Miike's eclecticism, knowing that there was no way to predict what his most recent project could entail. Overseas, meanwhile, the picture could not have been more different. On its surface, Audition is marketed as a horror film, though the first half or so of its runtime is notoriously deceptive in this regard. We follow the story of Ayama, a middle-aged businessman who has lost his wife and is convinced by a colleague to seek a new romance. However, being older and wary of the dating world, Aoyama and his partner set up a fake series of auditions for a non-existent film role. Through these auditions, Aoyama believes that he'll be able to learn as much as he needs to know about potential partners in order to determine their quality as potential mates. We mentioned before that Miike took his time, in spite of his rapid output rate, to declare his abilities early on in his career. This remarkably slow pace of advancement finds an analog most unusual to Miike's usual fare in terms of plot progression within Audition. For those Miike fans seeing the film for the first time, they may be surprised to discover just how slow the film is. For those thrill-seekers in the audience looking for a horror film, they will discover little more than what appears to be a simple, albeit seedy, romance plot for a little more than an hour. In this manner, the film ingeniously lulls its audience into a false sense of security, providing a veritable IV drip of small oddities, just enough to unsettle them, but not enough to denote anything majorly wrong with the proceedings. Thus, once the film descends into its true horror territory, well, let's just say there's a reason this film made as large a splash as it did. Audition's infamous climax, which involves Aoyama's partner of choice brutally torturing him to the accompaniment of some simply fantastic sound design, caused a sensation during the film's debut at the 1999 Vancouver International Film Festival and the soon-to-follow 2000 Rotterdam Film Festival. Numerous walkouts were reported, with one woman even heckling Miike, who was in attendance at the screening, calling him a sick man before leaving. What's more, once word got out about the remarkable heel-turn moment of audition, Miike began to forge major friendships and partnerships with international filmmakers like Quentin Tarantino and Eli Roth, in some cases influencing their later works. In the following five years, Audition would see release in dozens of other territories, likely owing to this initial sensation. What's remarkable, however, is how mundane the beginnings of this watershed moment in Miike's career truly were. As we've discussed previously, Takashi Miike is not exactly the pickiest of directors when it comes to his projects. He has done contract work for multiple studios and producers, often taking pre-written scripts and putting them to film rather than penning his own works. In turn, Miike has had a blistering rate of production throughout his entire career, just recently hitting his 100th theatrical release with Blade of the Immortal. Many of his works, like this latest film, are adaptations of manga, anime, and novels and Audition is no exception to this formula, meaning that no one necessarily expected the film to explode as it did. The original novel upon which Audition is based was written by Ryu Murakami, author and occasional director who we discussed previously, way back in our episode on Tokyo Decadence. Similar to Murakami's other works like Tokyo Decadence or the critique of international relations in the 90s in the Miso Soup, Audition is prototypical Murakami, in that it contains what Miike scholar Tom Mess refers to as melancholic violence. 
Ryu Murakami has long provided social commentary on the issues facing contemporary Japan and the modern Japanese identity, with his novels often straying into the realms of sex, violence, and drugs. Murakami seeks to expose the seedy underbelly of Japan, rather than cover up the less-than-savory parts of his home country in order to save face. Given that Takashi Miike's films, for one reason or another, often rely on heavy use of violence during his exploration of the darker side of life in Japan, his directorial style seems to have fit perfectly with Murakami's vision of love in the 1990s. The novel was adapted for the screen by Daisuke Tengan, the son of acclaimed new wave director Shohei Imamura. Longtime viewers will remember that Miike attended Imamura's school of film in the 1980s serving as assistant director on several of his projects before striking out on his own path in the early 1990s. The collaboration between Miike and Tengan, meanwhile, seems to have been coincidental, not being due to nepotism, but simply due to Miike working with virtually everyone over the course of his lengthy, storied career in film. Notable in this regard for audition, today's film was one of Miike's first major collaborations with cinematographer Hideo Yamamoto, who also shot Takeshi Kitano's Hanabi, which we covered some months back. Later, Yamamoto would also photograph Ichi the Killer with Miike. While addition may have had relatively humble beginnings, with Miike being brought on, as is typical, late in the pre-production process, Miike stated in a commentary track for the film that it was his first project which he specifically intended for a theatrical release. Perhaps this speaks to his intentions with the project, to have as many eyes on it as possible. Whether this was the case or not, the critical reactions were extremely varied to the film. And this, whether intentional or not, is what we believe to be one of the most interesting aspects of Audition. As is implied by the tonal shift in Ayama's girlfriend, Asami, we believe that one of the central messages of Audition is that we can't necessarily know someone else, even if we wholeheartedly believe that we know that person on a deeply personal level. This is a fairly common message at this point for topics on this show, whether they be a bride for Rip Van Winkle, paranoia agent, or Noriko's dinner table. Rather than retreading this ground shared by all of these projects, what we found striking about Audition was how the film itself effectively took on this quality. Rather than simply containing a message about the troubles of dating or forming relationships in the postmodern world, Audition obscures its message under a veneer of sex-based violence which is sure to disturb some, while delighting others and confusing yet more. This in turn makes the film the type of project about which any number of conclusions can be drawn, though most conclusions seem to chiefly fall into two camps. When the film was just premiering overseas, the reaction on either side of the Atlantic could not have been more opposed to one another. In Europe, critics lauded Audition for its feminist undertones, which stressed the power of women over men. In America, meanwhile, Miike was criticized as being a devil and accused of being a misogynist. The closest comparison that comes to mind would be some of the middle period works of David Lynch, like Blue Velvet and Lost Highway. Both of these films deal heavily with violence, particularly sexual violence, and both of them met major criticism upon release. They were called either misogynistic for apparently delighting in the violence towards women that they display, or feminist due to their willingness to display these actions while also allowing their female characters a level of control and retribution against their aggressors. In the case of Audition, the female lead and eventual torturer, Asami, has been criticized as having no substance by some. These critics claim that she is more or less a blank slate, a non-character who is driven by her mental health problems to become a mindless killer. Meanwhile, others claim that Eihi Shina, Asami's actress, actually provides a heavily nuanced performance which underscores not the reality of the modern Japanese woman, but the expectations of the modern man. She is picked by Aoyama for being the ideal submissive partner, and ultimately becomes a feminist icon for striking back against a system leveled against her from the get-go. For critics claiming that Audition contains feminist undertones, Asami's mental health problems serve an important purpose, both in their causes and in their expression. We learn late in the film that Asami was sexually and physically abused as a child. She was harmed by her ballet teacher in a manner and at a time which arguably led her to link her developing sexuality with the violence to which she was being exposed. As is seen in a number of serial killers whose crimes contain a sexual element, this link early in life between sex and violence can lead to developmental issues, 
and in turn sexual immaturity throughout life, if not a full-blown conflation of sex, violence, and love. Thus, for someone like Asami, it is not unreasonable to expect that her torturing of Aoyama at the film's conclusion is her attempt to express her genuine love for him, or at least what her abused mind thinks of as love. In fact, in the aforementioned commentary, Miike notes his thoughts on this, stating that, quote, her love became obsession. She thought love and torture were the same thing. That's how I see it. End quote. He later went on to state during the torture scene that, quote, she can't help doing what she's doing. End quote. Backing up to the last part of that first statement, we see that Miike himself acknowledges that this is merely his interpretation of the film. The characters are subtle and nuanced enough, with just enough information being given about their backgrounds and motivations, so that the audience can project their emotions and draw their own conclusions. Some viewers will notice how similar Aoyama is with his son in regards to being sexually inept, in spite of his advanced age. Others will simply ignore Aoyama in favor of critiquing Asami's either super shallow or super deep character. Audition is the type of story that can be taken as literal gospel fact, in which case it's a heavily affecting horror film that proves to be a solid watch in this day in our opinion. Alternatively, it can be taken as a brilliantly open-ended parable about modern relationships, mental health problems, and the gray area where these two cross over. Not everyone is a fan of the film, of course, but in many cases, it seems that Audition elicited strong responses both in the positive and the negative. In this regard, Audition became the film that formed the foundation of Miike's international career. However, in contrast, it also formed many audience members' baseline understanding of Miike's work. In the late 2000s and continuing today, Miike has expanded his repertoire to include a number of more family-friendly films, including adaptations of popular Japanese animes and manga. At this point in his career, many critics, both in Japan and internationally, took up the opinion that Miike had become washed up or a sellout. On more than one occasion, it has been declared that his career is finished, given how tame his films have become compared to his earlier works. A few years back, Miike even went on record to say that he wished he could make a career of films like Seth MacFarlane's Ted. All of this trash talk and pigeonholing started all the way back at the humble introduction of Audition at the Vancouver International Film Festival in 1999. Thus, in terms of the film itself, the message is horribly ambiguous while remaining stylistically coherent and well-produced. In terms of what the film did for Miike, it proved to be quite the double-edged sword, both introducing him to a global audience and ensuring the anticipated course of his career, as well as the backlash once this course was not followed. Audition is a simple film for some viewers, while it's a surprisingly deep film for others, making it difficult to discuss on a subtextual level. It also serves as a cautionary tale for artists, from its standard beginnings in terms of Miike's career at this point, to it becoming an international smash hit, it shows us from a historical perspective how surprising our successes can be, and how they can pave the way for us both for the good and for the bad. We'd like to know, what do you think of Audition? What do you think its meaning or message is? How do you think it fits into Takashi Miike's filmography? And for that matter, what do you think of Miike's later works? Given just how wildly contentious the film can be, we're curious how many varying opinions there are out there. 